Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Luke's on this absolutely glorious third weekend in October. You know what that means, right? The next weekend is our country fair. The weekend after that is the diocesan convention. The week after that is Thanksgiving, is Halloween. No, that same week of the diocesan convention is Halloween. Then the week after that is Thanksgiving. Then a minute after that is Advent. And then a minute after, no, it's Thanksgiving. Then get y'all track shoes on. <laughs> <laughs> because it's about to ready to get fun. Mm -hmm. Please turn to number 711 in your blue hymnal. It's an old camp song. So if you've been to camp any time in the last 30 years, it might sound familiar. And if not, follow along. All right. Have mercy upon us. God, that takes 
sins of the world, receive us our prayer. Thou hast sits at the right hand of God the Father, and have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art glory, thou only art Christ, we are the Holy Ghost, our most high and the glory of God and Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you revealed your glory to the nations. Preserve the works of, of your mercy that your church throughout the world may persevere in the steadfast faith of the confession of your names. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated and attentive to the reading of God's Word. Our first lesson comes from the book of Job, chapter 38, verses 1 through 7 and 34 through 41. The reading can be found in our online bulletin or your personal Bibles. A reading from Job. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man, I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy. Can you lift up your voice to the clouds? so that a flood of waters may cover you? Can you send forth lightnings, so that they may go and say to you, Here we are. Who has put wisdom in the inward parts, or given understanding into the mind? Who has the wisdom to number the clouds? Or who can tilt the water skins of the heavens, when the dust runs into a mass, and the clods cling together? Can you hunt the prey for the lion, or satisfy the appetite of the young lions when they crouch in their dens, or lie in wait in their covert? Who provides for the raven its prey when its young ones cry to God and wonder about the lack, wander about the lack of food? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 91, verses 9 through 16. The psalm is found on page 720 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us read Psalm 91, verses 9 through 16, responsibly by whole verse. I will begin. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, and the Most High your habitation. There shall no evil happen to you, neither shall there be plague come under your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. They shall, they shall bear you in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and adder. You shall trample the young lion and the serpent. Under your feet. Because he is bound to be in love, therefore will I deliver him. I will protect him, because he knows my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I am with him in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him to honor. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Our second lesson comes from the letter of Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 1 through 10. The reading can be found in our online bulletin or your personal Bibles. 
A reading from Hebrews. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer, offer sacrifice for his own sins, as well as the, for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. If you are able, please stand. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Lord, glory to you, Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? They said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand and at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has already been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whomever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. Please pray with and for me. In the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts, be acceptable to you, our Savior and Redeemer. Be present in this place, we ask in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be seated and can I get the young ones to come on down? <laughs> Yes. 
and she's still welcome to come down, right? Yes. And you know the most important part of me coming down today is that you're going to help me get up off the floor. <laughs> you're going to need, all right, so we're going to help each, we're going to help each other get up off the floor, right? <laughs> you're going to help, and you guys are going to help, and oh, I know you're going to help. Right? Okay. I got a question for you. You, you know, we're only in October, right? It's, we got Halloween. And what comes after Halloween? Christmas! Christmas! And after Christmas comes your birthday. You know what? The great thing about Christmas and Halloween and birthdays is we get to ask for stuff, right? Yeah. You are absolutely right. You are in this Christmas because of stuff that's happening far away from here. A lot of the stuff that we might ask for, we might not get. Right? Because a lot of stuff that Santa is going to make and that Santa wants to bring are stuck in the factories where the elves are making them and there's likely to be a problem with getting the stuff to Santa to get the stuff to you. Right? So what we need to make sure this year is that we ask for the right things and you hit it right on the head. It's not about it. It's not about the stuff. Right? It's not about the stuff. It is about what we can do to show our love to our sisters and to our brothers and to our friends. And it's about what we ask for what we want. So if we ask get yes. So if we ask for the right things, we're more than likely to get them. Okay. It's like it would be great to ask for more time with your parents reading a book. Right? It might be more time playing with the dog and cat. It might be how I can help. I want to help you, Mom. My gift to you, Mom, is that I want you, I want to clean up my room every day without asking. I'm going to make my bed. Right? It's not what we can ask for, but what we can give. What we want to concentrate on starting now for this season is asking, how can I not be such a pest to my sister? <laughs> okay, so that's what I want you to think about. Our gospel lesson talks about a couple of brothers who asked for some really ridiculous things from Jesus, but they thought they were asking right, but I want you guys to really be asking and, and thinking about what is right what is good, what is going to help you or help other people this Christmas season. Okay? Does that make any sense to you? Yeah. All right, good. Let's pray. Almighty God and Father, we know you have the best in mind and plan for us. Help us to ask what is good and right and helpful and in accordance with your plan for us. Be with these young ones this day as they seek and they learn to grow and know about you more. In Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. So now. Help. All right. Everybody. Okay. So you help me, I'll help you. And you can stand back there. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> That's the best part of the sermon right there. Amen. Amen. <laughs> right? Can we go to Trinity or one of the other seminaries? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Kind of a preacher with ED. You know, meat and potatoes all day long. No guile, no fluff. Open up the word and say, this is what it says.
period. We can learn something. And every time he speaks, I learn something. Mm -hmm. What I have learned in reading today's lessons is that it's hard for me to determine which of the two stories I more identify with. Um, when you read through scripture, are there particular individuals that you identify with? Mm -hmm. Right? How many Marthas do we have in the congregation today? All right? We got a couple of Marthas. How many Marys do we have in the congregation today? We got at least one Mary in here. Uh, do we have any Matthews? Do we have any tax collectors in here today? And a complete for one. You know, right here. All right? We have any Peters? In the congregation, Peter, the guy who always spoke first and thought about it later. <laughs> guilty. Absolutely guilty. But in today's lesson, we're hearing from Job, and we're hearing from John and James, the sons of Zebedee, and I often identify with Job, and I would like to say that I identify with Job because of all the trials and the tribulations that I have been, been through, and not so much because I have truly been blessed in my life. I've been through a trial or two. But God has always covered me through. The reason I identify with Job is I'm always asking God to explain himself. What do you mean? Why did you do this? Why weren't you listening to me? You didn't ask my opinion about that problem. A couple of y'all are going, mm -hmm, yeah, I know what you're talking about. On one hand, and John and James, the son of Zebedee, on the other hand. Hey Jesus, we have a favor. <laughs> we want you to do whatever it is we ask. Did any of you parents have your kids ask you a question that they already told you the answer for before they asked the question? I'm going to ask you the question, but I want you to answer yes, okay? Right? Whatever I ask, don't say no. In, in, anybody have that experience out there? A couple of you not yet. Yeah. For you with younger kids, your time is coming. When I think about Job, and I think about the steadfastness of Job's faith, up through the 37th chapter in the book. He is defending himself against the people who have attacked him because of all of the evil Satan has brought upon him. Satan brought it upon him. God did not bring it upon him. Satan brought it upon him. And he's defended himself well, and he's finally gotten to the breaking point, and he's like, what are you doing? It's Lucy, you got some explaining to do. <laughs> As if God owes him an answer. As if God owes any of us an answer. This is not a question of God. Why did I get this cancer? God, why did my son die? Why did this mass murderer come into the school and shoot all of these kids? Those are good and righteous questions because we're only seeking to understand. But when we seek to justify our own behavior, that's when we have a problem. Because a lot of times we want to justify our behavior and we ask God to do it. And God's likely to respond to us as he responded to Job. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel without knowledge? Just because you read it on the internet doesn't make it so. Just because you saw the latest YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or TikTok doesn't make it the truth. Just because you can find many articles that says the world is flat doesn't make the world flat. William Shatner says, I've seen it for myself, the world is not flat. 
He also hope, held up a postcard that said, uh, forget you, Picard, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> we often approach and address God as an equal. And that's a problem, my brothers and sisters. We forget who we are. We forget that we are created individuals, that we are created in God's image, but we are not God. And on a number of levels, what we need to be doing is saying, thank you, Lord. I don't understand it, Lord. Please help me get through this scenario. Please help me get through this situation. And realizing that God's grace is sufficient for us, regardless of what we are dealing with. God spends the next two chapters answering Job and letting Job know just how much God is and he isn't. But still I feel like Job. Still I feel like I deserve an answer to my questions. I deserve an answer to my problems. And that's where I come into the line of being James and John because I'm asking the wrong question. I'm asking the wrong question. I'm asking the right person with the wrong question. If you've ever had a problem in your life that you're praying for over and over and over again and you're not getting the answer you want, it might be because you're praying the wrong prayer. You're asking for the wrong thing. I've got this pain, Lord, and the doctors have told me it's cancer. Lord, take this cancer away. 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 And you're not hearing the answer. You're not getting what you want. Well, the question might be, the prayer might be, Lord, what do you want me to do with it? How can you be glorified through it? What witness can I be because of it? Oh, I would really like this, God. You've got obviously a better plan. You know everything. You know from the beginning to the end how it's going to work. Lord, hey, give me the right question to ask. And then you can be ready for the answer. James and John remind me of a group of teenagers. James and John remind me of me. Dad, <clears throat> um, I, I want to ask you something about Friday night, but I don't want you to say no. Uh, I, I, I need a favor from you, Dad. Don't say no. Can I borrow the car to go to a party? Yeah, no. Uh, Dad, can, can I go out drinking with my friends? Uh, no. Dad, uh, will you loan me a thousand dollars? Don't say no. No. <laughs> Asking the right person the very wrong question. Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. What a loaded question. What a truly loaded question. And the wisdom of Jesus is going, well, what is it that you want? What do you want me to do for you? Obviously, they recognized that he was in, the, in a position to be able to grant them magnificent things, wonderful things. But they had not been paying attention because everybody else had come up to ask Jesus questions for their lives were looking for healing. Either looking for physical healing, looking for spiritual healing, looking for the forgiveness of sin, looking to be recon reconciled to each other, looking to be reconciled to God. No, they're looking for power. They're looking for glory. 
And I'm here to tell you, it is good to be next to people in power. Amen. <laughs> it's good to be sitting up there next to the president. Yeah, I'm somebody. Okay. It's really good to be the canon to the ordinary. Long before I even had a glimpse of being a priest, I met the canon to the ordinary in Colorado. This was back in the 80s. And I saw the canon to the ordinary during the, the staff, and he was standing right up there next to the bishop. And, you know, the bishop referred to him, and he was looking really good. And I went up there and I asked him, you know, what's it take to be the canon to the ordinary? That looks like a really cool position. And he said, you have no idea of what it is like to be the canon to the ordinary. And then my next question is, is well, what is a cannon? Mm -hmm. And he says, somebody that makes a lot of noise and is easily fired. <laughs> That's a cannon. And the more I have known cannons to the ordinaries down through the years, man, they do a whole lot of work. <laughs> and they get very little responsibility. So although they may look good standing up there next to the person in power, not so much. There are things that that second and third position require that you may not be ready for, which is what Jesus is telling James and John. They ask him, grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. When is Jesus' glory coming? When was it at that moment? Jesus was in his glory when he's up on the cross, my brothers and sisters. That is when Jesus is at his glory. That is when the penalty for our sins gets dealt with. That is when the payment for what we could not pay ourselves takes place. That is when he's in his glory. He dies and he's resurrected again. But if had he not died on that cross, all the rest of it not would have come to pass. So that's what's special about it. And y'all remember your Good Friday sermons, right? Who was on his right? A thief. Who was on his left? A thief. Had, I wonder if James and John had known what they were asking, if they would have still asked for it. You think they would have wanted to be crucified with him on that Good Friday as Jesus is in his glory? They were asking the right person the very wrong question. And that's what I want us to think about this day as I was talking to the kids. What is it that you want from God? What is it that he can do for you? Are you really willing and ready to listen to the answer? And if you don't get the answer, think about what the right question is. In this coming season, there is going to be a lot asked for us. And we are going to ask of each other and of ourselves lots of things. We're going to ask ourselves about Christmas. We're going to be asking Thanksgiving. We're going to be asking Halloween. We're asking a whole lot for the congregation next Saturday. All y'all come on out and help us with this country fair. Just in case you didn't know, the 23rd of October, our 28th annual country fair in Great Docks and Stampede from 9 o'clock in the morning to 5 o'clock in the afternoon. We're going to be setting up all week. Just in case y'all hadn't heard that before. Just in case y'all hadn't heard it either. Come on in. <laughs> but we need to be thinking about our questions. We need to be thinking about how we can help, what we need, and what God wants from us. <laughs> And if we get the questions right, we're going to get the answers right. If we get the questions right, we're going to get the results that God wants us to have. But 
it starts first with praying to have God reveal to us just that little bit of his plan for us. And then being able to discern it and follow it for the rest of our days. Let's not be so much like Job. Let's not be so much like John and James. But help us to be a little bit more like Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In your online bulletin and on page 326, let us stand and affirm what we know to be true as written for us in the ancient words of the Nicene Creed, where we as a community, a group of believers, stand and affirm the foundations of our faith. When I ask you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, what do you believe? Together, we believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of the of the one who made for the Father. Thy people, 
give thy heavenly grace, especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their lives. We beseech thee also to rule the hearts of those who bear authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, Greg, and Michelle, our governors, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O oh Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. We most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Reuben, Ernesto, Bruce, Barbara, the Dumanaro family, Elizabeth, Bruce, Patsy, Armando, the Pratt's family, Anita, Tony, Linda, Holton, Debbie G, Bertha, Maynard, Bobby R, Jose, Lolo, Michael, and Christina. And to all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. In the church's weekly cycle of prayer, I bid your prayers for the Rio Grande Borderland Ministries, immigrants, and those seeking asylum in the United States. Anna Reza. Bridge Chapel. In the military, we pray for those, pray for all those serving home and abroad. We pray for those in law enforcement, all firefighters and first responders. Please add your own petitions and thanksgiving this time, either silently or aloud. <coughs> We also bless thy holy name and all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth, continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of Saint Luke and all thy saints, that with them we, we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our these are prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Let's spend a moment or two in personal confession and reflection before we continue with our public corporate confession. forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him have mercy upon you 
pardon and deliver you from all sin. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Jesus bids us, come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. He assures us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Paul wrote to Timothy, saying, This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. The Apostle John tells us, If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Please stand. My brothers and sisters, saints of the church, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please share that peace with those closest to you. All right, enough this piece. Have a seat. I'm going to ask for my beautiful bride to stand up here because I want to show you something that everybody has an opportunity to display for all the world to see. That is our newest Country Fair t-shirts. We have an oxen howling at the moon. Okay. Okay. Um, we have them from size small up to 3X. So we have a size to fit everybody. They're 10 bucks a piece. Cheap at three times that price. They are available for you out in the parish hall. So we're asking, pick one up, pick up two or three, wear them, particularly wear them during country fair, and then wear them out throughout. Hello, Hi. how are you? <laughs> if we ever get out and do things as a group, these would be sure to let folks know where we are and who we are and what we do and the fact that we almost are a little bit fun. We also have for uh, for sale, and I didn't bring any with me, um, through a generous donation from one of the members of our church, we've got chopped pecans for sale, fresh chopped pecans for sale, one pound, ten bucks. Again, really good price. If you checked out the prices of pecans in the grocery store, you'll spend ten bucks for a third that size. We have lots of them, so now would be a good time to pick up your pecans to do the baking for the country fair, which is happening next weekend, October 23rd, from 9 to 5. If you're going to be baking stuff and you're wanted for the bake sale, please get it to the church by Friday. Please bring it to the church by Friday, early Friday, because we have a group of folks, volunteers, who are going to be packaging and sorting and pricing and decorating and making our house. And if you want to help, definitely come because we could use the assistance. Um, for those of you who are in the Bible study, we will not be having Bible study for the next two Thursdays. Because the next Thursday we're going to be smoking. If anybody we've got any smokers, no, um, meat smokers in the congregation. We got any meat smokers in the congregation, we're going to be smoking all day Thursday. And I do mean all day. Like, we're going to need some help prepping on Wednesday night, Wednesday afternoon and evening, because we've got just about 250 pounds of brisket. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we need to season and get prepared. Uh, we need to get the smokers ready so that at oh, early 30 on Thursday morning, we can get them lit, and we're going to have them on under smoke all day. So I'm anticipating that they should be ready-ish about 6.30, 7 o'clock Thursday evening. And then it's a matter of bringing them in, trimming them, chopping them, plating them up, and getting them ready. 
Okay, so if you are good with the knife, if you and, and the best part about it is, if you're here Thursday, uh, we must do quality control. <laughs> right? We must do quality control on the product. So if you haven't even begun to get your fill of brisket, Thursday evening would be a good day to swing by. Um, we won't be having Sunday Bible study until sometime later on next month. Uh, we'll do the we'll start the Sunday uh, Bible study back up. Birthdays and anniversaries, we got a couple. What before? Um, the, the, person, the person who did our t-shirts um, is a neighbor of ours, and uh, when she first did them, I, she showed me a proof, and it was beautiful, and then she went uh, to visit relatives back east and left her people in charge of it, and they filled in the form differently. They did them exactly backwards. And so she came back from her vacation and she folded them all and gave them to me and I opened the box and went, those are backwards. And she's like, what? Um, these, the dog is white, the clip is white, the moon is black on some of them. And, and how did you order? I don't know. It was the whole shipment was done wrong. Okay, so because she's a great person and because it was their mistake, she did them again in record time and got them right, but she can't use the, the ones that are wrong. It's like a total negative of this, okay? Um, so I thought if we could, selling them, um, buy one, get one for half price of the, of the ones that aren't right, um, and then whatever proceeds we make from that, possibly giving her some money back, because she did pay for all those shirts and she got nothing for them, so. Um, so yeah, and I'm thinking not not selling them outright. You can't just buy a, a negative one, but because that hurts us. Um, but <laughs> I'll buy one, get one half price if that's okay with everybody. Does that sound good? Okay. Birthday. Birthday. Birthdays, anniversaries. What? You got one? Come on down. We, we do have a couple of books. We have one in the third book. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, can you make it up here? Oh, yes. All right. Yeah. Don't fall. Don't fall. That would be bad form. Uh, the family that prays together stays together. Route 66, you know where you're going. Uh, 
absolutely. <laughs> Are you comfortable with the trip? All the way. Yes. Can I get an amen? Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, God, we give such thanks and praise for birth, for bringing us into this world in your image. We pray for these, your servants, that you would continue to guard and guide them every step of their way, that you'd be a light to their path and a path to their feet. That you would put a head of protection around them. They cannot turn to the right or to the left, but always follow where you lead. And ask that you would strengthen and lengthen up their days. All this we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, I, I, I did. Who did oh, who's this? Mary Jo. Everybody say, Hi, Mary Jo. Hi, Mary Jo. Yeah. It's okay. No, no, falling at 90 is not a good idea. <laughs> Any other announcements for the good of the congregation? Did I leave anything else? Lorenzo? Am I good? The barn will not be open this Tuesday because we're getting ready for the barn to be open at Country Fair. Oh, I do have a question. If anybody out there has any special knowledge on what it takes to construct and put together a full-size teepee, are you going to be around for a couple of years? No, but I can show you how to do it back to church. We're on top. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us and offering it. Oh, before we do all that. In a moment here, we're about ready to go through communion. Okay, communion in the Episcopal, in this church is open to all who want to have a deeper and closer relationship and connection with God. It's open to any who are hungry, all who are thirsty. In this season, communion has been varied from church to church, and what we are doing at this time and in this place is it is open. We are serving both body and blood at the rail. We are requesting at the time being that everybody can taint into the common cup as opposed to drinking from the common cup. I am praying for the day when we can get back to being able to drink as Christ has commanded us. But I would suggest and request that everybody can taint. If you are uncomfortable with in tainting into the cup and you only want to take the bread, that's fine. You can take the body alone. You just can't take the the bread alone. You can take the... Y'all know what I mean. <laughs> okay. Not yet. Um, but it is open. If for your own reason you can do neither, we would still ask you to come forward as a part of the body and cross yourself like so. And then I will pronounce God's blessing upon you. Oh, and if there are anybody, if anybody's here is uh, gluten intolerant, we do have gluten-free wafers. You just need to let me know when you come up. Uh, you, okay, good. Then. <coughs> we'll make that happen. Okay. Uh, we will first be serving uh, my mother, Mrs. Cave, and then we will invite everyone else to come up uh, in turn. When you do, please come hit the holy sanitizer of Antioch. Here, uh, just as an attempt to try to do what we are, we have been asked to do by those who think that they have a clue. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave Himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. <laughs> Yeah. 
Now for the Lord. Lift up your hearts. We lift up your hearts to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is indeed in right for us to do. It is very deep, right in our bounds and duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee, and say, together, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, and heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord our God. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You may kneel or remain standing. All the glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth, and didst make us in thine own image. And that thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made a very full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, and it is and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice and know it's coming again. For in the night which he was betrayed the bread, when he had given thanks, he broke, gave it to his disciples and said, Take thee, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, Lord, 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 Lord,
your sins to the world. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. O Lamb of God, that takest the way the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest the way the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them remembering that Jesus Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The table of our Lord Jesus Christ has been set. He is our host, we are his guests. The table is open to any who are hungry, all who are thirsty, all who desire a closer relationship with our Lord and Savior.
page 339. Let us pray together. Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank you for the power to see us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And thus assured, Sarah, by the of your goodness towards us, and that we are the very members of the corporate of the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs to the hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we will only beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world of that Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Please stand for our recessional hymn. Church, but he is missing one of these. 
uh, he needed something to help steady him. So if you know of where there's an extra one of these four wheels with a seat, please let me know so I can get it to Hal so that he, we can increase his mobility. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.